Good morning, everyone. My name is Franz Fernandez. We'll be looking into the glucose monitoring system. But before I begin, just by a show of hands, how many of you are familiar with diabetes? Okay, good. Good number of you. Well, for those of you who are not familiar, I'll just give you a brief introduction. Diabetes is a disease in which the body fails to produce enough insulin or fails to respond to produce enough insulin. Insulin is a hormone which helps cells to absorb the glucose, which in turn gives us energy. Even though the, uh, diabetes has no cure, it can often be controlled by the use of glucose monitors. Diabetics often use gluco glucose monitors to regulate the sugar in their blood. <laughs> so here we have uh, some monitors that, are out and that we see. I don't know, most of us are familiar with them. First one is a uh, fairly old. It's operated on two AA batteries, which makes the device really bulky. And one of the things is that you have to log in your, your glucose readings, which is kind of inconvenient. You have to carry a lot of stuff. The next one is it's a bit smaller, but still operates like on a watch battery. And since it has limited data storage, you still have to write, write down your, your glucose readings. This one is, is better. You could actually store the, your glucose readings onto, onto your computer, but not many of us carry our computer with us. But we, we, most of us carry is a smartphone, right? What our device does is uh, it sends uh, the, the readings to your phone via Bluetooth, and it's capable of storing it, and we can have a history of all our glucose readings and send them to our doctor or so maybe interested in your glucose readings. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing is that our our glucose monitors is uh, rechargeable. Okay. So how does a diabetic person check his sugar level? Well, he or she draws the blood onto the test strip and inserts that test strip into any kind of glucose meter, and that meter will generate a sugar level reading. And now surprisingly enough, that reading is not actually from the blood that's on the test strip. It's actually from the current that's produced in the test strip. So how is current produced by the, in the test strip? Well, it's a simple chemical process. Now, we all have glucose in our blood. So when we draw blood onto the test strip, that glucose will react with a catalyst in the test strip called glucose oxidize. Now, glucose oxidize will oxidize the glucose right here, meaning that it will take away its two electrons. Once it does that, the catal this catalyst is now reduced, meaning it has, it's charged with two electrons. Now, it wants to give away these two electrons to the electrode that's built in the test strip, but it has to first go through what is called a mediator. Now, this mediator will take the two electrons from the catalyst, and will then be able to send it to the electrode. And once it does that, the electrode is not charged with current, which can now be used. So this, this is how our device works. Uh, we can't go around the puncturing part, but once we puncture our finger, we draw the blood into the test strip, and it generates an electric current, which is a, uh, the electric current is, is converted to a, to a voltage by the potential step, which is then, it's, a, it's an analog signal, so our device is really digital signal. And then, the, it's, it's a, converted to a, the, the voltage is an analog signal, and by the, the analog to digital converter is the one that converts it to digital. And then that digital signal is sent to our Bluetooth unit, which then transmits it to our phones and it outputs a glucose reading. Hmm. Volts. Well, that's not really a readable uh, number for the standard diabetic. It has to be a number that they can that they can understand. There's a lot of programming that goes involved that's involved with it. We won't go too deep into it. However, <laughs> there is a little bit of conversion that needs to go along with it. Our test pattern, we set up a system and have a test every single component. 
as you saw in the last, that was kind of an almost fabricated model for our quick draw. We had to make sure that all of the little components inside the, the quick draw worked and relayed with each other. We had the Vincentia stat and, and the uh, uh, microcontroller, and that had to connect with the Bluetooth relay. This here is the complete unit, uh, which is the microcontroller, and it converts all the information. We're using our Arduino uh, program, uh, which is Playground, and it's a wire format, in order to get the number that is the volts and convert it back into the glucose concentration number. We actually calculated that number through some tests and put it into the program to make sure that the program actually worked and was really. We had the Eclipse phone on here, which we had to program for the Bluetooth so it would actually connect and talk to the, uh, to the quick job program. We utilized some test pattern solutions from 40 milligrams to 450. This is a nice range for diabetic on the concentration. We chose to uh, individually take each one of those concentration levels and we took and had to receive the peak in the voltage. This peak voltage that we had is the, number, is the number that I was talking about that we have to convert back into the concentration level. Once the peak voltage, we just used the peak voltage because we have a, a constraint on time and a constraint on, on money. The test strips come in a uh, container with 20 strips, it costs about $30. It's it expensive after a while. Okay, um, so we have a peak voltage now or we want to convert it into a glucose concentration. Because when the glucose monitor gives a, generates a reading, it's not going to give it in volt. It's going to give it in glucose concentration. So how do we convert the two? Well, it's actually a process called calibration. And so basically, for example, if my peak voltage is, say, 1.5, that corresponds to a glucose reading of 350 milligrams per deciliter. And that's the reading that will show up on the, the glucose meter. What we did is we decided to choose a middle range glucose concentration at 225 milligrams per deciliter. This is our error check reading. Uh, the FDA has a 20% uh, 20 uh, standard. In, in our testing, these peak levels were averaged to get our average error at a 9.2. So obviously the system, the quick draw, is definitely in that range. In conclusion, we saw that this glucose monitoring system was not only convenient, but was efficient, accurate, and gave us a large database that could be helpful for diabetic patients and for their doctors. We're looking in the future to have an automatic sensor which will give diabetic patients updates that their doctor can both share with each other. Lastly, I would like to thank our wonderful mentor, Danielle Guerra, and Professor Dio Garajan for their support and their advice. I'd also like to thank the Cook Bridges Foundation for this wonderful opportunity, as well as the RAs and the UCSB faculty.